All right, we're live for Fireside Chat number 167. So a little bit of this is me uh, catching up on some stuff. So um, as a heads up, as you saw uh, from Kusiag and announcements, somebody was uh, spamming uh, Discord phishing links, which were telling you that you get three months of Discord Nitro via Steam. Uh, that is a scam. Do not click those. I think they're all deleted, although there are... Uh, the way the logging works in our moderator log channel, it lists, if you delete a link from the server, it lists what the link was that was deleted in the log. So <laughs> hopefully none of our officers click that in log. Um, I don't think so. But. Uh, that said, um, let's see. believe this would have been after double checking last fireside was 26th yeah okay so uh number one uh niflheim has been changed slightly um so slow mode was already removed i think i already said that that was a little while ago and basically we just adjusted it so um there's now a role to give you access to that channel so everyone who could see it before can still see it i gave everyone that role double checked should be correct um, if you can't, for some reason, let me or an officer know, we can give you it. Um, but the point of that basically is that that role can be removed um, if, for example, people just don't want to see that channel. Um, so it makes a little bit more of an opt-in situation for, for Niflheim. So if you don't want to see Niflheim, I'll let one of us know. Or if you can't see it for some reason um, and want to, uh, again, let any officer know and they can fix that. And let's see. All right, so then kind of the bigger announcement here that um, if you've been listening to these, you've probably already heard about, but um, the whole our whole, whole officer manual, officer training uh, setup is all live now. So if you are a current or former officer and you haven't already contributed advice or you want to change yours or add more to the officer manual, you can do that still at any time. I'm willing to, to continue to edit that uh, portion, but... Um, the rest of the training detailed in there and everything else detailed in there is all good to go. So that manual is now in use for training and anyone who is uh, of the rank Master Chief Petty Officer um, is eligible to start. So people should be reaching out to you if they haven't already about it, that, but if they haven't, you can reach out to an officer to let them know um, whether you want to or even don't want to uh, do the training. It's not required to do it, but if you want to move further up the ladder to warrant officer and higher, uh, it is required for that. Um, and you can see the manual there. There's a link in announcements, um, which links to the post in About WA, the Master Chief Petty Officer rank, which has the officer manual link listed there. So you can check that out. And um, that said, basically, Um, that is, uh, it lists the training, but it also has some other stuff. It lists the advice, it lists the officer oath, it lists um, a few different uh, other things, such as what's, what's required of officers in, in particular. One thing, which is WA lectures. So uh, my plan is to have these uh, start up pretty soon. Um, I know I'm going to do some myself, but actually anyone can host a lecture. So if you want to host a lecture, let me know especially officers, I'm hoping we'll take advantage of that because it's a requirement that officers have to attend and or host, either host one lecture or attend, and actually I have to double check this, so check out that officer manual link again for some more specifics on this, but um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the, the details here uh, just, um, just in case as well. Oh, let's I can find it here, let's see. All officers are required to attend either three lectures or host one each year. So basically, if you um, since this has just started with three months left in the year, um, I'm basically saying that uh, if you you need to attend one uh, throughout the remainder of 2021 or host one. Uh, if you do host one here in 2021, I'll probably give you some extra credit for next year. But um, it's not a whole lot, and um, my hope with these is to make them more flexible, too. 
So basically, uh, the plan is they'll be at various times, um, not a set time that they'll be at, um, and they'll be streamed on Twitch, and the VODs will go up on Twitch, of course, but they'll also go onto YouTube permanently. And uh, then with that in mind, there's a few different ways that you can uh, get credit for attending the lectures. So uh, the first is to um, salute or type in Twitch chat and remain there for the duration of the lecture, which would be being live, or to join Cert Holler, where the lectures will be held, um, and stay there for the duration of the lecture. Uh, not muted, obviously, or deafened, rather. <laughs> And uh, finally, uh, you can comment on the YouTube VOD or message me uh, or whoever gave the lecture um, a, uh, something you found interesting or some comments you have about it, um, at least like four to five sentences, basically, on the YouTube VOD. So uh, most lectures, the plan is they'll be between 15 and 45 minutes. Um, if they go a lot longer than that, for example, beyond an hour, it might count as two lectures. So, um, yeah, I think those should be fun for WA history buffs. But my, my plan is to expand it just beyond that um, to also have the opportunity for people to give lectures even just about game mechanics or games, um, especially ones that, like, WA members play a lot because I think that does offer a lot of benefit. Um, for example, uh, you could take that video and maybe even do something with it within that game's community, like post it to their websites or share it with people in the game. Maybe it actually, you know, gets some popularity, brings in some recruits that way. But even if that doesn't happen, um, it might introduce other WM members to the game. It might help out the WM members that are already playing it. So I think there's a lot of benefits there. So I'm open to a lot of different topics um, as far as anybody who wants to give a lecture. Most of my lectures are probably going to be more based around WA history, lore, and organization as well. So I talked about this a little bit in Meat Hall, Kusiag was asking me, um, but basically, um, my, my, I have a few uh, ideas for topics, but my first one was going to be kind of Officer 101, something like that. So just an overview of the basic duties and stuff that officers have to do and how to do them as kind of a basic guide. Oh, hey, Ulfold, I see you have a suggestion there. Fire away. Definitely happy to hear that. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, that's a really good point. Maybe I should do some kind of a weekly podcast thing where I can inform people of changes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I'll make a note of that. I don't know. I don't know that'd be pretty crazy, yeah. We've never done something like that before, so. Um, let's see. Where was I? Yeah, so, so the lectures. And with that in mind as well, I hope this will be pretty accommodating to people's schedules because um, since the logo on YouTube, uh, and if somebody else does give the lecture, I'll try to be there to record it and put it on YouTube for them. Um, so hopefully um, the plan is that, uh, I mean, technically you could procrastinate it till like December 31st if you really want to. Hopefully people aren't doing that, but if it does happen, hey, if it's done in time, I guess no problem. Um, but uh, you don't have to worry so much about attending them. Um, if you do want to attend them, it shouldn't be, you know, a huge time commitment, like I said, between 15 and 45 minutes and hopefully an opportunity to learn something about WA. This is kind of something that was suggested to me. Um, this idea is basically totally from uh, Athwaller, actually, just talking about how he'd like to brush up on lore and stuff. And I thought, well, why don't we just expand that, bring back the old lecture series of which I only did two. They are on YouTube, if you're curious, but they're pretty old, but they're still fairly accurate, um, I'd say. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just kind of a cool opportunity to get some kind of uh, history information and such and just, yeah, something uh, fun to do, essentially. But that is a requirement for officers, so make sure I'll try to get some of those out as soon as possible so I'm not forcing people to procrastinate. But um, if you would like to give a lecture on anything, uh, like I said, uh, just to let me know. I'd love to do that as well, and that would take some of the work off of uh, me having to make all of the lectures uh, myself. It's a lot easier for me to just sit in the channel and record somebody than actually have to figure stuff out, do some research and prep and everything for the lectures. 
So let's see. Let me jump back to where I was. Um, I will just throw it out there. I know people were discussing how to list dates in the roll call. Um, personally, my preference is this, this is what I did on the member review document is to just say the month, the name of the month rather than the number so that there's no confusion. Um, if people want to list it um, as uh, month, or sorry, day, month, year. Um, we've never expressly forbid that, but I would uh, discourage it just because traditionally we've always listed it as month, day, year. So that's um, whatever is you know the standard in, in different countries. Um, the way that we've usually done it as a clan has been month, day, year. So that's, that's usually the vantage point everyone's gonna be operating from. So generally, if I see that some, in somewhere, I will change it to month, day, year. But if if you list out the name of the month rather than the number, I definitely would have no problem with that. But um, that's my stance on that. I don't think it's a, it's a huge issue. Um, the main place that is kind of the storage spot for all the recruitment dates is going to be the, the member review uh, spreadsheet. And like I said, I, I change all the dates on that to, to be have the month written out uh, the name of the month written out so there's no confusion there so uh, at the end of the day it's it's not a huge problem because that document is there and that has uh that has the information uh let's see talked about lectures talked about officer training um yeah an officer meeting is going to be at about 44 minutes in the command center voice channel first officer meeting ever um these are mandatory for an officer but i've made it clear that uh if you can let me know if you won't be there one thing I'll be trying to do is trying to find the best time possible that's um, good for all the different time zones and such that we've got, which, which is a challenge. Um, so if you cannot make it, it's not the end of the world. Don't get super worried, but just let me know at the bare minimum. If you let me know, it's not a problem. At least I have some idea. And some of you have already let me know that you won't be there. So uh, I appreciate that. Well, don't appreciate that you're not here. We'd rather you're here, but I appreciate you letting me know. <laughs> And uh, let's see. Uh, I think that's probably about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump off, make sure we get some time for office hours. So I'll be in office hours till uh, right before nine o'clock Eastern, uh, six o'clock Pacific. Uh, and at that point, I will switch over to the officer meeting. And for anyone curious, that's not going to be streamed. Um, you have to be at minimum a non-commissioned officer. So chief petty officer, or master chief petty officer rank to attend but it's only required and um, really intended for Warren Officer Plus, but I'm happy to have NCOs that are interested to attend. Um, so, yeah, we'll see everybody for office hours, possibly in Cert Holler and then Command Center afterwards for the officer meeting at six o'clock.